Shalom and Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, Amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel and for another session of our studies in Isaiah. I know you're thinking, wow, two studies in Isaiah back to back, really close together. Well, Isaiah, Yasha Yahu, chapter 60 and 61, they complement each other so well. I wanted to present the fullness of the two together within a short proximity of time. So I thought I'd bring this one to you as well, because these verses of scripture in this book of Isaiah, these chapters, they are so prophetic. It amazes me how Isaiah, Yasha Yahu, was able to receive from the Father and grant us such Baruch chapters with so much information and so many prophecies. I just, I'm amazed at the Father and I am so grateful to our ancestor, Yasha Yahu, Isaiah, who made himself available to the Father to receive these words of encouragement and instruction from the Father for us. And I'm thankful to the Father for choosing him and setting him aside to cry loud and spare not and to lift up his voice like a trumpet to declare the word of the Most High to our ancestors and now to us. So I'm so grateful. So we're going to be reading Isaiah Yasha Yahu chapter 61. And one of the beautiful things about this chapter is that it's a chapter that prophesies our restoration. There are so many chapters in the book of Yahu, Isaiah, that prophesy, that encourage us regarding our gathering and our return to our homeland. This particular chapter not only encourages us regarding our return home, our restoration, but it also encourages us regarding our Messiah and his entry into the world. So we see within the chapter this prophecy about the mission and the call of the Messiah. And then you see the fulfillment of this within the Barit HaDishah or what they call the New Testament. And so it's just wonderful as we look into these things, we're going to see just how Yahusha came in fulfillment of all that was written about him and the what they call the Old Testament or the Tanakh. So we're so grateful for these things and so grateful for an opportunity to get to share these things together and to study them out. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day so far and that you're ready to receive what the Father has for us through this study. So let's get started. Yasha Yahu, Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit, the Ruach of Yahuwah Alua is upon me because Yahuwah hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah, and the day of vengeance of our Lua, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Okay, we're going to pause here. This, every time I read this chapter, it's just such an encouragement because we know that this is what the Father, this is what he intends for us. And we're going to see, I believe, a double fulfillment of this prophecy because it is a prophecy. You could either consider it a double fulfillment or you could consider it a fulfillment, a pause, and then a continuation of the fulfillment. Because clearly we read as we're reading in the first few verses of this chapter, that Yahusha is the fulfillment of this prophecy. The Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. We know that that's talking about Yahusha. As a matter of fact, he tells us so. So let's go to Luke chapter 4. 
And when he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, Yashayahu. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, meaning he looked for it. He didn't just happen to open the book and land on Isaiah 61. He looked for it. He wanted to let the people know, I am intentionally reading this to you because I want to reveal something to you. So he found the place where it was written, the Ruach, the spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel, the Basora, the good news to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? <laughs> I love it. I just, I love it. I love it. And they're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. This is Joseph's son, right? Isn't this Yosef's son? He's telling us that the Ruach, the spirit of Yahuwah is upon him because he has been anointed to do these things. Is he telling us that he is the Mashiach? Don't we know his daddy? So it's wonderful when you see the fulfillment right there. It's beautiful. But our ancestors didn't recognize him and they didn't recognize that this was the fulfillment of this prophecy. Some did, but most didn't. They didn't see. And for those who pretended to see or indicated that they could see, they were the ones who stood up and said, hang him on a tree, essentially. They didn't say crucify him, crucify him, but they said, hang him on a tree, put him to death. When we go back to Isaiah chapter 61, we see that the father sent the son to accomplish these things. He sent him to preach good tidings, to preach good news. What's that? The good news of you don't have to be a slave anymore. You don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. You don't have to be at variance with your brother anymore. You don't have to allow the nations of this world to subjugate you and mistreat you anymore because they have been given power over you because you would perpetually sin. And if we can solve this sin problem, then you can live in victory and grace and abundance and wealth and prosperity and all the good things. I've come to tell you this good news. I'm going to take care of the sin question for you. I'm going to take the penalty. I'm going to die. And I'm going to allow you to become one with me and resurrect with me in newness of life. This is good news indeed for the nation of Yasharab. He also sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted today? Yahusha says, I'm here to bind up your wounds. I'm here to cause you to rejoice because liberty has been proclaimed to you as captives. Yes, I know. Here, I, I'm here on the earth and you're under Roman occupation. You're not even free to have your own temple system without the Romans involving themselves in some way, whether small or great. You're not free to make your own decisions for yourself because you've got governors appointed to you from the Roman provinces, from the Roman Empire, so to speak. You're not free to make your own decisions. You're not free to allow me to be your king. But I'm coming to tell you that those things are changing. I'm coming to tell you that the prisons are opening for you. I'm coming to tell you that the acceptable year of Yahuwah 
is being proclaimed. And what does that mean? It means that it's a year of Jubilee. It's a year of Jubilee. He's saying it's a Jubilee year. Everyone that has been imprisoned, that has sold themselves into slavery, it's time for them to go free. All the land that you sold and that you lost, you get your land back. Everything that's been turned upside down is being turned right side up because it's a year of Jubilee. And I'm proclaiming to you the vengeance of our Lua. The Father will avenge you. He will avenge you for the pain that you've experienced at the hand of those who have hurt you, of those who have sinned against you. The Father has sent me to tell you that you don't have to mourn anymore because he's your comfort. He sent me. Yahushua told them, those of you who mourn in Zion, the Father's giving you beauty for your ashes. He's going to take your ashes. He's going to give you beauty for the ashes for that failed marriage, for the failures that you may have experienced in life, in business, in your family, in your marriage. He's going to give you beauty for the ashes of disappointments when things just don't work out quite the way you wanted them to. He's going to give you beauty for the ashes of all the hurts and pains that you've experienced living unwanted in a land that despises you. He's going to give you beauty for the ashes of lack. He's going to give you beauty for the ashes of sadness. He's going to give you beauty for all of the burnt and charred things in your life. And the beauty that he gives you is going to be an eternal and everlasting beauty that comes from living in the kingdom of the Shamayim of, of heaven here on earth. It comes from being Yahuwah's children, cared for and protected by him. This is what he sent his son to tell us. And for all the ashes that he's taken away from us, he's going to give us victory, victory over every circumstance. He's going to give us a ruach of contentment and happiness. He's going to give us an experience of abundance. When we go home, everything that we need will be provided. We'll only need ask and it will be provided for us. That comes by virtue of living Deuteronomy 28, the positive side, the blessing side. And finally, he's going to give us joy for all the morning, for all of the days and weeks and months and years and decades and centuries of being in this wicked land, for all of the time that we've lost being away from home. He's going to give us joy for all of the mourning of the lost opportunities and the lost relationships and the lost time. He's going to give us joy. Hallelujah. And for the spirit of heaviness, he's going to give us the garment of praise. And with this garment of praise, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of what you've gone through, what you've been through, what you're about to go through, you will have attached to you a very person, the Ruach of praise where you can worship the Father, regardless of what your circumstances say. You can say to any circumstance, hallelujah anyhow, praise Yahuwah, Yahuwah be praised. Now, once we get back in our land, there will be so many positive experiences and so many blessings and barakah that it'll be easy to praise. But even in the midst of what we're going through right now, still being in captivity, he's going to give us the ability to praise him even now because our Messiah has come. He has come to deliver this message. And some of us are experiencing the barakah of these things in short measure and in short order. But soon, we're going to experience the fullness of it. He's going to give us such a ruach of joy that we will be praising and praising and praising. For praise is what we were created to do. And we will praise the Father in ruach and in truth. And we will never cease to give him thanks and praise for all that he's done for us. And for the spirit of heaviness, for depression, for sadness, he's going to give you a garment of praise. Why? Because he wants you to be called the trees of righteousness. 
He wants the world to know that you are the planting of Yahuwah. You are his tree. He is the husbandman and he planted you and he wants you to operate according to his dictates and his statutes. And he wants you to know that old waste places, they're going to be rebuilt. And the former desolations, they're going to be repaired. And so are the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. All that you have lost will be restored. And this is such a baraka to us because we've lost so much. We were the head and we've become the tail. We have lost so much. Our lives have flipped 180 degrees. We've gone from being on top to being on the bottom. We've gone from being loved and beloved to being hated and despised. We've gone from being wealthy and royalty to paupers. And some of us having to depend on government assistance in order to make it. We have lost so much. But for all of the waste places and for all the leanness in our souls and for all of the family dynamics that's been broken up for everything that we've lost, the Father is going to restore those waste places. He's going to restore the old landmarks. Not only will we walk in righteousness, not only will we walk in joy, not only will we walk in gratitude, but we will walk in a level of dignity that we in our persons have not known. We will walk as royalty, as kings, and as priests. And we will be respected and lauded and looked up to in the world as servants of the Most High Yahuwah. Finally, we will find ourselves living out what the Father intended for us to live out. Finally, after so long a time, the Father will restore us. He will restore us back to where we were before, but this time we'll be wiser. We'll know what happens when you disobey the Most High's commandments and what that looks like and what it feels like. We'll know what happens when you worship the gods of the nations around. We'll know what that feels like and we'll know what the consequences of those actions are. And we'll have gained some wisdom and some understanding that we didn't have before. So yes, the Father is going to rebuild all of those waste places. But when we inherit them, we will inherit with a little more wisdom than we had before. Hallelujah. So as Yahushua stood up in the synagogue to read Isaiah 61, as was his custom to attend synagogue on Shabbat, and he read this promise, this prophecy. And then he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He was delivering the message from the father to the nation of Yasharal. And at that time, some got it, but many didn't. That was the message then. Our ancestors didn't fully embrace it. And so though Yahushua came to bring these things, he brought salvation from sin to those who were ready to receive it. But all the other things that went along with this eternal salvation that he came to bring was not received because the people lacked faith. And just as those in the wilderness did not inherit the promised land because they did not have faith, many of our ancestors did not inherit the kingdom at that time because they did not have faith. So when Yahushua comes again, it is crucial that we have faith, that we have Amunah. And that is why he says, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find Amunah? So this time when he comes, we have to believe the word of the Father and receive the salvation of our souls, the restoration of our kingdom, our nation, our, our status before the Father, before the world, and everything that he has in store for us, we receive all of that through our Amunah. It is crucial that we hold on to our Amunah, especially here as we're nearing the end. It's important that we hold on to Amunah, and it's important that we endure until the end. Continuing. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien, meaning strangers, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, but ye shall be named priests of Yahuwah. Men shall call you the ministers of our Alua. 
ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory ye shall boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Hallelujah. So we read here that strangers shall stand and feed our flocks. Strangers, meaning those who are not of the house of Yasharal, they will be servants and they will feed our flocks. And the sons of strangers and aliens and foreigners, they will be plowmen and vine dressers, meaning they're going to work in the field. They're going to pick the grapes and they're going to plow the fields. They're going to watch over the flocks. That will be their role. But the children of the Father, those whom he has chosen for this special purpose, he says, men will call you ministers of Alua, and you will be named priests. You're standing in your role as priests in the world. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. So the riches, the, the wealth, the status that the Gentiles have, they will bring everything into the city, and they will cast their riches before the children of the Most High and before the Most High. In verse 7 we read, For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy. So we see this idea of the double, this idea of multiplication no longer division we're no longer divided we're one nation now under Yahuwah and we're multiplying and blessings barakah the barakah of Deuteronomy 28 is now being multiplied unto us and we're receiving double honor double blessing double land double do double grace double mercy double healing, double power, double righteousness. Everything that the Father has for us, he's granting us this double blessing, this double baraka. And so we see that the Father is granting us double for our trouble. He understands and knows what we've been through. And he knew and knows that we've gone to, through these things because of our sin. But in spite of that, he's still granting us a double portion baraka because remember the double portion always goes to the firstborn son and the father has called yasharal his firstborn hallelujah yasharal is his firstborn and as the firstborn son goes the double blessing hallelujah so we are his firstborn earthly son yahusha is his firstborn heavenly son so the double portion goes to the nation of Yashbrah here on the earth. And then, if that wasn't wonderful enough, the kingdom of the Shamaim then comes down to the earth realm, and we get to possess the kingdom, and we get to live in Yahuwah's presence as he tabernacles amongst us here in the earth realm. Hallelujah. What a wonderful gift from the Father. So we are about to inherit brothers and sisters, the double. Hallelujah. So here is where we see the great flip. In the past, we experienced another great flip where we went from head to tail. Here in this verse of scripture, the Most High is telling us that there's going to be another great flip where we go from being tail to head once again. The first shall be last, but then the last shall be first. It's been written, it's been spoken, and it has to come to pass. So we see the Father telling us that instead of being slaves, we will be the masters this time. But we won't be abusive. We will be kind, we will be loving, we will be righteous, we will be priests in the earth. And we won't mistreat any of our servants. But those of the nations, their role in the kingdom will be to serve the children of the kingdom. 
those of the house of Yasharal, and any of those of the nations who are unwilling to serve, they will not be allowed to live in the kingdom. They will not be allowed to survive. The father wrote it, the father spoke it, and he will bring it to pass. So what we see here is slavery, but it's not the kind of slavery that we experienced because we will be just. The father will see to it. He will not allow us to mistreat anyone. He will not allow us to abuse anyone. And why would we want to? We know what it feels like. We know what it looks like when Esau rules. We would never want to rule like Esau. So though the Most High places into our charge and our care, those servants who will serve us, but we will not treat them untoward. We will be kind and we will be good. If you want an example of this, look at how our ancestor Abraham treated his servant Eliezer. Eliezer was the steward of his house. And he thought at one time he was going to have to leave all of his riches and wealth to his steward, Eliezer. He was a trusted servant. He sent him, he sent Eliezer to go procure a wife for his son, Isaac. So just because we're being given the ability and the role and the responsibility of having servants doesn't mean that we will mistreat them. And I can't state that strongly enough. There are some of us in the awakening right now who really hype up and we hype ourselves up on the fact that the nations are going to serve us. But we don't think seriously enough about the responsibility that's been given to us to rule rightly and to rule justly and to treat others the way we wanted to be treated when we were servants and slaves. We can't forget that. The Father is watching. He's looking at our hearts right now to see those of us who would abuse this power. And those who would do that, they won't be chosen. He's looking for those with pure hearts who are willing to step into their role, but also understand to whom much is given, much is required. In the last video I did, someone commented and said that I didn't go far enough describing how the Gentile nations are going to be our slaves. And I did that on purpose because I don't think that's something that we need to focus too much attention on. It's going to happen. The Father will see to it. But the minute we start focusing all of our attention on the people serving us, then we fall short of us serving the Most High. We need to focus our attention on serving Yahuwah, and the Father will take care of who serves us. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, the nations will serve us, but we are honor-bound to be good to them. It's what we do. We don't reap our whole field. We leave the corners for the widows and for the strangers. The Father has built into the very economy of Yasharal to be kind to strangers, to be kind to foreigners, to be kind to our servants and to, our, to the widows and even to our animals. We're honor bound to be kind to those who are beneath us to those who are outside the covenants of promise, to those who struggle, to those who mourn, to those who have been treated badly, because we know what it's like. And when we're on top again, we will know even better than we ever could before what is the right way and what is the wrong way to treat those whom the Most High has given under our power. Continuing. We're going to have everlasting joy, joy without end. It won't end, brothers and sisters. It won't end. It'll go on and on and on. For I, Yahuwah, love judgment. I hate robbery. For burnt offering, I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which Yahuwah hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Yahuwah. My soul shall be joyful in my Elua. Our Father loves judgment. He loves just judgment. And He hates robbery. So, for burnt offerings, 
He will direct our ways in truth and our work in truth. And he will make an everlasting covenant with us through his son. And we will be known among the Gentiles. They're going to come up to us and say, let me take a hold of the hem of him who is a Hebrew. For I heard that Yahuwah was with them. Teach us the ways of the father. Teach us the ways of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And their offspring shall be known among the people. And all that see them shall acknowledge them. Meaning, we're going to have such high status in the world that people will not only bow down to us, but they'll respect us and see us as something important. To the degree that we've been treated as if we had no value, we're going to see the exact opposite and the flip-flop of that. We're going to be treated as if we have tremendous value. People will look to you. They'll want your opinion. They'll come to you and they go, oh, you're a Hebrew. Oh, they're going to ask you things and they're going to want to know the answer to questions about this or that. What do you think I should do about that? Oh, I have such honor and respect for you. That's what's coming for us. For those who can hold on to their faith, to their amunah, and continue to obey the Most High's commandments. So all who see us will acknowledge us, and they will know that we are the seed which Yahuwah hath blessed, and we will rejoice. So we will greatly rejoice in our Father. We will be so happy and so joyful. We will probably worship and praise all the time, just living in a state of perpetual joy and worship to the Father for all the wonderful things and all of his wonderful benefits that he has brought forth for his children. Continuing, For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. So the Father clothes his children with garments of salvation. And he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so Yahuwah Elua will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. The Father is giving us honor and status, and we're going to produce like we've never produced before. We're going to produce fruit unto righteousness, and the whole world will see it. And the beauty and the fragrance of our righteousness before the Father is going to spread throughout the whole earth, and they're going to be drawn to us and drawn to the kingdom and drawn to the Father. We will finally be the example that he intended us to be. We will finally be the oracles that he intended for us to be. Hallelujah. All the nations will see our righteousness and they will seek after the Most High and say, Surely, Yahuwah is with you. This is such an exciting word of prophecy for us, brothers and sisters. The nations will laud us. They will look up to us because finally we will demonstrate to them that we truly are the children of our Father. We will shine like the sun in the kingdom of Yahuwah. We will walk circumspectly, upright, redeeming the time, walking in wisdom, walking with righteous intent, ruling justly, ruling rightly, loving all, not mistreating anyone. We will finally show the world what true leadership looks like. They will look at us and they'll say, we wish that you had been ruling all the time, but alas, you couldn't rule because you were being punished. You were being scattered and you were being shattered and you were being honed and prepared for this leadership role that you find yourself in. And we know that it was painful for you, that it was hard for you to endure all the things you had to endure. But look at where you are right now. Look at where the Father has brought you to. Look at how he has elevated you. Look at what you've learned through what you've been through. What a just ruler you are. What a wise servant to the Most High you are. What an honorable king you are. What a just judge you are. And the world will be amazed at the level of 
excellence in our nation and among our people at the level of technical genius and brilliance and righteousness and all and every area that we could possibly conceive of as it relates to life, we will be the head regarding it. It's hard to imagine right now. It's hard to imagine being good at everything, but our nation will be good at everything because the blessing, the barakah of the Most High will rest upon us once again. And the world, the whole world, those that are allowed to exist after the great judgment that comes, that survives, will be in awe of our leadership. They will be in awe of Yahuwah in us, working through us. They'll be in awe of our King, Yahusha. They'll be in awe of those whom the Father elevates. They will even be in awe of the least in the kingdom. That is what the Father has destined for us. And we don't really deserve it because we sinned against the Most High. We did. But we are being restored not because we are good. We are being restored because Yahuwah is good and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. So as we read these verses of scripture and we see these promises that are being made to us, let us not think for a second that we are being elevated, that we are being baruched because we somehow in our efforts and in our righteousness earned it. We did not. We could not. It's all by Yahuwah's grace. If it had not been for Yahuwah on our side, where would we be? We would be destroyed. That's where we'd be. The Father could have thrown us away, but he didn't. He preserved for himself a remnant, a remnant according to the election of grace. He preserved a remnant for himself. And we are that remnant. We are the fig tree that has once again blossomed at the end of this age. And may we produce the fruit unto righteousness so that the Father will be pleased with us. And may we step into the role that he has for us as kings and priests and judges and rulers, husbands, wives, legislators, governors, Whatever the position is, may we rule with diligence, with grace, and with excellence. And may we never think to mistreat another human being in even a similar way as we have been mistreated. May we learn from all of our suffering, and may we be just and righteous rulers. And as the Father has had mercy upon us, let us have mercy upon those who we placed under our charge. So as we have read Isaiah chapter 61, we see many Baraka waiting in store for us as a nation and as a people. It is what is on the horizon for us. And these things that are coming are oh so good. That is what's coming for us. Those who endure and those who hold on, those who continue, though things are weird and strange and difficult and challenging for many of us. Our goal should be to just hold on. Just hold on because our change is coming. There is such a great status for us. It's going to be completely different. I mean completely different. If we can just hold on, the Father is bringing it. Just be encouraged today. No matter what you're going through right now, brothers and sisters, the Father is going to bring the restitution that we have been hoping for. He's going to stand by his word and do what is written. So be encouraged because there is a great revelation of the coming restoration of the nation of Yasharal. And it's just beautiful to behold. So when you get a little down in in the dumps and you feel like it's never going to happen, open up your scriptures and read Isaiah, Yasha Yahoo, 60 and 61, and see if that doesn't put a smile on your face. 
I don't see how it couldn't. It's just such good news. Hallelujah. This is the Basora. Hallelujah. Well, I thank you for joining me once again on the channel, brothers and sisters. And I pray that these verses of scripture and Yasha Yahu have encouraged you on this day. And I pray that the Father would continually reveal to us all of the wonderful things he has in store for us, for those that love him. Hallelujah. May the Most High Yahuwah Baruch and keep you, brothers and sisters. And may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, peace in every area. And may you be encouraged today, brothers and sisters, as you realize just how respected and loved and baruched and wealthy we're going to be. Just how righteous and pleasing and how we're going to produce much fruit unto righteousness unto the Father. Our restoration is going to be great, 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 great. It's like the colossal jubilee where everything is restored. It's like getting back to our Garden of Eden experience with the Most High. It's coming. It's coming. Don't lose hope. Don't lose Amuna. Look up, brothers and sisters. Your redemption draws nigh. Hallelujah. Aman and Aman and Shalom and Shalom.